Good morning. Let's all stand. There's some hymns back there. Page 305. 305.
Jesus is coming soon. Listen to the words of this. How true it is.
glory. I'm glad one day that we're going to lay these burdens down, aren't we? And we're going to go home and be with the Lord and not have to worry about it no more. Aren't you thankful you're saved this morning? Amen. That you know your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you're here today and you don't know that, my prayer is that God would, would convict your heart to you come to know that. Because listen, just as that one of those songs says, there's a there's a day of doom coming for a lot of people if they don't get their heart right in the floor. I'm thankful this morning for the blood of the Amen. Amen. Good to have Brother Tony Harris with us this morning. He'll be bringing the message. Just a few announcements. It says the college vacation Bible school will begin the week of July the 12th. Tiffany will be sending out dates, times, and locations via text message, so let's be much in prayer for that. Uh, last day to turn in to turn in the in memory form for the director. Uh, I guess that's today, you're right. Next Sunday. All right, next Sunday will be the last the last day. Please see Melissa if you have any questions in the blank forms uh, or in the form or near the uh, the elevators. If you have any questions about that, just uh, just see Melissa. Uh, ladies auxiliaries uh, they're going to wait a little bit longer on having that, so just watch for announcements in the book. You need to add anything to that. Man. Of course, this evening we'll sanitize the, the church at 530, and we'll stay after the, the service to sanitize again. I think that's pretty well, pretty well done. Do we need any other, make any other announcements you know of? We do have a lot to be in prayer about this morning. Well, let's remember uh, Brother Kevin and his family. I believe they're traveling. They're already there, maybe. Let's, let's, let's be much in prayer for them. Uh, anyone have any spoken or unspoken requests? Let's remember that.
she's not feeling good this morning. Even as chaotic as it is in this country, we still know who's in control of it. I don't know why it's happening, but there's a reason behind it. God knows, and that's all I need to worry about. It's in His hands, and He'll take care of it in His good time. Anyone else? Morning again. Morning. I'm glad you're saved this morning. Amen. It's good to know that we've been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. Realizing today our our nation has gone through something. If you'd told me uh, six months ago 
that our world would be in the shape it's in. I said, you don't know what you're talking about. But it did not catch God by surprise. He knows all about it. So it's good to be here this morning, house of the Lord. Sang a song about the cross. I thank God for the cross. Hadn't been for the cross, the blood, we would have been in hell this morning. But I thank God for the blood. Amen. I thought my brother, Preacher Ralph Sixton at Nashville, uh, the, the Jehovah Witness come down to see him. And he, and, and he met him at the door and come out on the front porch and said, it's the blood. Amen. And they started to leave and he got out in the road and jumping up and down and said, it's the blood. Amen. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. God's Son cleanses us from all sins. Amen. Realizing that, that our nation is in the shape it's in, and I'm glad God knows all about it. God, uh, I was thinking the other day, uh, my wife and one of my wife was talking, everywhere you go, there's fear. There's fear everywhere you go. But I'm glad of one thing. I know that something that's going to happen one day soon. Thank God the King of Glory is going to come after the church. Amen. The Bible said that them that look for him shall appear again the second time without sin and the salvation. Amen. And I'm glad we got a hope. So I would like to say this this morning. I hate my wife couldn't be here, but she's in the hospital. Had a uh, broken hip, not four lives. Had surgery yesterday, so her heart sad this morning. And very few times. And I stood behind the sacred desk. She wasn't back there praying for me. I miss that. But I know the God that's able. And continue to pray. She's probably listening this morning. Uh, and I'm pretty sure Brother Kevin's listening. He told me to preach Aaron Hyde. <laughs> no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Uh, let's pray for your pastor that God would uh, give them a good vacation, keep them safe. And uh, so do pray for my wife that God would help her you know, make things easy for her. I, I tell you, if you, if you ain't never been through that, you don't know what, talk, what I'm talking about. Three years ago, she was in, uh, fell down steps in uh, Gatlinburg at a women's uh, conference and broke her hip and her femur. But she fell other now, she said, I am so clumsy. You know, God, God, God allows things to happen to us. I don't know why. I don't know why God, God allows things to happen, Brother Roger. But he does. So remember her. I miss her here this morning. But I'm glad I got somebody with me. Amen. He said, I'll be a father, and I'll be a mother, and I'll be a sister and a brother. So it's good to be here today with you. I'll do my best for the Lord this morning, whether it's five minutes or 30 minutes. Have your Bibles like to read with us. A very familiar scripture in Psalms chapter number 46. Psalms chapter 46. And verse number one, if you'd like to stand for the reading of the Word of God. Somebody said, I don't know any, uh, see any sense of standing. We stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. This is more important than the Pledge of Allegiance. Amen. Amen. Verse number one, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Salah, there is a river, the stream, where I shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, who shall not be moved. God shall help her in that 
right early. Father, we love you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day we can come to the house of God. Lord, thank you, God, for these good people here today. God, I pray for your best of pastor. I know he's here in my heart. We pray he's probably listening today. God, but I'm glad you know all things. There should be somebody here this morning that don't know you. May this be the time you commit your heart. God, if there's somebody here that's going through a hard battle, God, I pray for them this morning. God, move in a special way. In Jesus' name, all the church said, Amen. You know, uh, we don't understand why things happen like they do. We don't understand the mind of God. But, uh, but I mentioned, if you mentioned, oh, man, uh, my wife would been to Walmart or somewhere. And I said, you can feel this fear moving through the, through the Walmart, through the parking lots. But I do know one thing, we've got a refuge. And his name is Jesus. I'm going to be you for a thought would have one this morning. On a Christian's place of safety. You know, we, we've, got, we've got hope this morning. The Bible said if only in this life we had hope, we'd be of all men most miserable. Have you ever wondered, hey amen, that, hey man, that all that's gone through our land, I know churches that's closed down because of the uh, coronavirus. And, 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 and they're, they're closed, they had to close down because of that. But I bet God has never closed his house. But I do know this, amen, that God knows what we need this morning. We have a place of safety we can come to in the time of storms. Now, I don't know whether you've ever been in, in, through a, torn, a, a hurricane or not. I was uh, uh, on the end of one, but amen. But I was scared. And, and, and they got us off of the island where we was. And they, amen. And, amen. And, and they took us over to a place in Mohan City. And they, amen. I remember, I remember going over there. Amen. You couldn't see the car in front of you if it rang so hard. But we got over there. And hey, I'm going to bring this out here this morning. And I remember, amen. And amen. That place where we was, and all them palm trees was laying down. And it got to thinking, there won't be no palm trees left here upon this where we're at. But what I didn't realize, hey amen, is that God put them there. I got up the next morning expecting to see, hey amen, just a uh, uh, trees laying down. To my surprise, the sun was a shining. Let me tell you, the sun will shine again, church. Amen. The sun will shine again. Don't you never worry about that. Because we've got a place of safety. I remember looking out the window, expecting to see that palm tree laying down. To my surprise, they was upright. And I found out something about a palm tree. You plant a palm tree and they'll eat it, man, and, and they'll, the, the roots will grow until it wraps around a rock. Hey, man, thank God I'm glad I'm wrapping around the rock of wages this morning. Amen. I'm glad Jesus knows everything about me and he knows everything about you. He knows the storm that you're going through with. He knows, amen, everything about you. Amen, amen. Somebody said, for God, amen, I'm having a hard time. Now, God knew that before you did. Yeah. <coughs> did you know in America, amen, there's so much fear in America this morning. But I'm glad God is our refuge and strength. I'm very proud of help in the time of trouble. I remember looking down palm trees. 
pray that. Boy, that, 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 that bless my soul real good. Ain't no one thank God. Hey, man, if it's a make-out palm tree, stand back up. Ain't the devil ain't got no problems. Amen. Sickness. You see, for the coronavirus, hey, I'm not going to let... Uh, just uh, end, end up uh, preaching on the coronavirus because you've heard so much about that. But God knew that before it happened. But let me tell you what he said here. He's a very pregnant hell in the time of trouble. Amen. God is our refuge. And our strength. We need strength today. We need something to help us along the way. We filled in at, at uh, Trent 20 for about 10 or 11 months there. They began to worry if this is going to go, that's going to go. I wonder if uh, the, the people would ever come back. But it got to thank that God, you know all about it. You know everything about us. I don't know whether you've had, had any uh, thoughts about quitting the house of God, the church. I remember just a young preacher. I thought they preaching three years. Now it's all used to somebody hey, in the congregation said, hey, I'm a preacher. I was used to my mama shouting when I got in the pulpit. But this particular night, see, man, nobody shook hands with me. See, nobody, hey amen, the real, really, it seemed like they cared about the message I preached that night. I said, God, this is it. I got my little Volkswagen that night, threw my Bible in the back seat. I said, this is it. I'll never preach again. That was my head, not my heart. I said, God, I'll never preach again. I don't have enough to put up with that. But God began to speak to my heart. I called you for a purpose. I called you for a purpose. And I remember all night long, I was on the third shelf. I said, God, I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't have to preach no more. This is it, God. And I remember getting a car the next morning. That old blue Volkswagen, like most Bobby Pennington had. And I looked to see if the traffic was, uh, car was a coming. But the first thing that I seen that morning, hey man, was my Bible in the back seat, and something cut my heart. I said, God, I said I wouldn't go preach no more. If you'll forgive me, I'll never say it again. I want to hit the ground running. I want God to bless me. I want God to be the refuge. We've all had trials. We've all had, had cares and things happen to us in our families. Death, cancer, heart attacks. But let me tell you this. Where I'm going, there won't be no heart attacks. Where I'm going, there won't be no, amen, a cancer. Where I'm going, thank God, it's going to be joy for them in the ages. I wish I could that little old brown Bible that I had. I threw that out the night before. I held it to my heart. I said, God, if you'll help me to preach. If you'll help me, God, whether somebody likes you or not, God, I want you to help me. Preach the word. The Bible said, preach the word. Best man sees an outseed from the time of God. Well, they will not, not in your self doctrine. But God knows all about us. You may be going through a storm this morning. I say it like this. You may have just gone through a storm or you're going through a storm or you're going to go through one. I thought about my precious wife. She
she wasn't planning on this. She was planning on getting behind that pillar to be out of bed today. That's singing the song. But it didn't happen. But I'm going to tell you one thing right now. But I'm going to the country. There won't be no sadness. There won't be. I told that lady on the funeral home in Madison County, North Carolina. I said, you're going to have a business, lady. She knew what I was talking about. Good Christian lady. I'll, I'll go out for a funeral and she'll, she'll get in a chair and sit back in the back to hear me preach. Sometimes in our everyday life we don't understand why God allows things to happen. That's true. But I do know this that God is in complete control. I like that. God is in complete control. He knows that trial you're going through with. He knows that sickness you're going through with. He knows that death you is when your family passed away. But I'm going to land one day where there won't be no death, no pain, no capture, no broken bones. Because of Jesus Christ, I can say that I'm saved. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. It's because of the blood of the Lamb. Sometimes we don't understand that. This is what he said at verse number four. There is a river. The streams where I shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Now like this. God is in the midst of her. God will never let you down. God will never put you down. He'll help you in the time of storms. And says, she shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right earth. The heathen rage, the kingdom were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. My everyday life, I, I've been, this coming September, I'll be preaching 52 years. When they had me a 50 year anniversary from a, from a preaching, nearly two years ago, I said, I quit a thousand times. I quit a thousand times. They made it in my mind. There's people here this morning who didn't understand my voice. There have been times that you just felt like in your mind quit. But I'm glad God knows all about us. We have a place of safety that we can go to in the time of troubles. And again, the thing is sometimes my life Me and my wife went through a lot uh, surgeries and, and broken bones and what have you. But I'm glad in heaven they won't be none of that. Amen. God has never one time let me down. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. But he said, I'll go with you all the way. Amen. Not part of the way, but all the way, even then in the world. I like a refuge. A refuge is a place of safety. It's a place that we can go to and call upon the Lord. Many times I've had to ask God to forgive me. I don't know where you have not. I don't know. Maybe it says the thing to, to God that I didn't really mean. God still loved me. While we were just sinners, Christ died for our sins. They sung about the cross, the old Ricky Cross. Now, I don't know how many people that had died on that same cross. I don't know. But that's how they executed during that time. Then they sung a song. 
about the blood. Honey, I want to tell you, thank God there's something about the blood that really ain't going to pull the strength in my heart. That I know the redeem of the blood. If something happens to me this evening. I do know this. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. I call Jesus. He said, I'm going away and prepare a place for you. He said, if I do go away, he said, I'll come back and get you. That's the hope we have. Time is slipping passing by, church. We don't understand, I said, well, go about the, about, about the virus that's going around. We don't understand why God allowed that to happen. Bless you, Lord. But we do know this, that God knows what he's doing. I go to the nursing homes quite a bit before this took place. I walked in a little room and that little lady and I said, Preacher, why am I here? One lady said, I own a home down in Jonesburg, down in Lonestone, I believe it was. And now it's part a real good part of it, but my children had tucked it away from me. Hey, they're going to stand for an almighty God one day. She, she, she said, I'm stuck here in this place. It gets lonely. I was going down the hall one day of a nursing home. I heard, I heard a man singing. There's something about the blood. I just happened to this place by the wall of sin in the blind land. I never will forget when I passed in North Carolina, there was a, had a blind preacher who preached for me, son. He told me one day, he said, Preacher, I'm going to have it on you. I said, What are you talking about? He said, Well, you walked out this morning and you seen the green grass. You seen the sun with the shining. I want to tell you, church, if the S-U-N don't shine, the sun will shine. That's so Amen. That's true. And he said, uh, you can see the birds flying. But he said, the first thing I'm going to get to see is the place of my Savior. Well, I tell you, I, hey, and I feel like if somebody pulled, pulled, pulled the, uh, ran, the strength of my heart about that time. He said, I don't want to get to see Jesus for the first time I'll ever get to see this particular uh, preacher. He went, he went to, uh, and learned about birds. He could, he, could, he could tell you what bird was a, uh, was a chirpin. United States, over across the waters, he could tell you. He said, I know something, thank God, in my heart. He meant that I can see. As I said, we don't understand why things happen. But we do know this, that my Jesus is real. Amen. Amen. God has never lost one battle, and he never will lose one. But he's a present help in the time of trouble. I like to know some of you saying, when the storms are raging, just stand by me. But all the things happen, just stand by me. You see, Jesus will never fail you. You will fail God and you will fail him, but he will never, never, never fail you. I'm going to show the gun to close. But I didn't know this. If something happens to me, I know where I'm going. I know where I've been. I used to be in sin. But you see, Jesus hung on the cross 
cross and he died that we can have this right to the tree of life. He can have life. We can have life and have it more abundantly. You see, Satan can't do that. Satan's time is limited. His time is limited. And he's not got long to work. And believe me, he's been working harder now than he ever did in his life. Because he's not got long to work and Jesus has got to put him in his place. I'm glad of that. I think about it with Joe, and I'll say this. Job was a perfect man. <laughs> he issued evil. I mean, a good man had to find children that were, and my good was his children had sheep, oxen, and cattle. But all of a sudden, Satan come up to God and said, He'll cuss you to your face. God knew what kind of man that Job was. He knows what kind of person you are. He knows what kind of person I am. If all in this life we had hope, we'd be all men most miserable. His children died. And I'm not going to take time to go through all the details. All his sheep, all his cattle, all his oxen died or stolen. And here, amen, 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 there he was from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet with balls. It's great to say, said, trying to get a little ease. But let me tell you this. God still loves Job. <clears throat> And the person that you could, that in, that you could uh, depend on comes to the door and said, Joe, why don't, you, why don't you just curse God and die? I guess if it had been me or you, we'd probably say, you're about right. But what did Joe do? He got on his knees and worshipped. Through everything, his children died. Amen. Everything he had was a goal. Yet, he worshiped. He knew where his help was coming from. <laughs> but the devil said, Boy, I've got old Job now. He'll, he'll, amen. He'll, 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 he'll just hand everything over to me now. Worship God. How can we worship God when all the birds are going around? Just like we always did. True. Jesus is the only thing that we really need. Amen. He is what we really need in America today. We demand, they demand they're, they're, they're killing one another. They're, they're destroying their police departments. Yet, the devil said, we're going to get America, and we're going to get them hard. But I want to tell you this, God's got a bunch of people that's going to live right. Amen. God's got a bunch of people that's going to shout the praise on the hillside. Amen. It's hard to praise God. Whenever things are going wrong in your life, it's hard to pray, praise God and see your family going through some things. This has probably been the hardest year I've ever had in my life. Now, I'm not going to go through no details. Oh, God's already took care of it. He said, I will never let you down. He said, I'll go with you all the way, not half the way, all the way. Let me say this before we close the message today. 
We need to depend on God. We don't need to depend on the check that's coming through there in the mail from the government. We need to depend on God because He loves us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. God gave the best He had. Jesus left the part of the ivory palace in the heaven. Come down here to the mud on the sand, knew he was going to have to die. Yeah, he still paid the price. He paid the price on Calvary. And somebody like me won't have to go to hell. Did you know what? When you got Jesus, we would have been in hell this morning. We wouldn't be sitting here at Southside Greenville Baptist Church. But let me tell you this, Jesus loves us so good. I like the song the little the children sing sometimes. What, what hurt us are all the same. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tell me so. Says what you got to hand for. Appreciate the Lord. A Christian has got a place of safety. You know that they, they say when, when a tornado or something comes, we need to follow that shelter. I've got one. I've got one. It's not down to nowhere. It's in the blood. It's in Jesus Christ. Have this right to the tree of life. Let's have my sins. You play some number. Somebody might feel like coming to the this morning. Jesus loves us. He loves you better than your mom and daddy could.